Hello everyone, I'm Carpen Gizmat, and welcome to Mechanics Dismantled Episode 3. In this episode, we're taking a look at randomness. Before this episode starts, I just quickly wanted to say sorry I've been so inactive recently. I've had loads of stuff going on, including exams and university. Well, that and the whole global plague thing. Anyway, let's get going. A lot of games include random chance, from random encounters and procedurally generated maps, to the classic hit rolls, damage rolls, and dealing from decks of cards. Randomness is a way of keeping the player on their toes, preventing them from seeing a game as a set of absolutes and instead makes them judge risks and probabilities against each other before deciding the best choice to make. In games design, we often refer to two types of randomness, input randomness and output randomness. These were first coined by board game designer Jeff Engelstein on his podcast, Ludology. He defined input randomness as a situation in which the randomization occurs before the player making a choice, and we'll start by talking about that. A good example of input randomness is being dealt a hand of cards. The cards you receive from a shuffled deck are random, but you make the ultimate decision as to what happens with that random hand. Input randomness can be very good because the player feels like they have a much greater degree of control. Even in the case of a terrible hand, you can still try and make a plan and still try and do your best. Another example of input randomness is procedurally generated map in an open world game like Subnautica or a dungeon crawler like Enter the Gungeon. You can almost think of the world like a deck of cards that you get dealt at the start of the game and that you have to deal with as long as you play. Now, let's move on to output randomness. Output randomness is a situation where the randomness occurs after the player has made a choice. There are two really good examples of this, dice and random numbers generated by computers. I've included them together since, well, randomly generated numbers are basically the computer's equivalent of rolling dice. Dice are particularly popular in tabletop games, though I'm not sure 100% why. I went around trying to find card-based tabletop games, but I couldn't really find anything that closely resembled Warhammer, D&D, Call of Cthulhu, or any of the other dice-based tabletop games we know and love. Most of them were far more abstract, and none that I saw actually used physical measurements as a mechanic. Maybe that's a summer project one day in the future, but that's not what we're talking about now. Anyway, output randomness like hit rolls, victory chance, hit percentage, and random damage values are all over the place, in so many games, across so many different genres. They force the player to add up the chances and decide whether the risk is worth it. If a hit only has 5% chance of damaging, you're far more likely to turn your guns on something you can actually hurt. The drawback to output randomness is that it gets really, really frustrating when it goes wrong. Like when you finally get through an enemy titan's defences and you roll a fucking 3 for your da- Yeah, so, output randomness forces you to consider risk in a different way. It can come at the risk of bloodshed, though. This is a side note, but I just thought it was a fun little fact. Older computer systems didn't have effective methods of generating random numbers. The maths hadn't been invented yet. So they did something different. In their code, they had a list of values, usually from 0 to 255, in a random order that was generated when the game was created, and a pointer, which pointed to the currently selected number. Every time the game needed a random number, it would return the value at the pointer and advanced on to the next number. This method of pseudo-random number generation was used in Doom 1993 for damage numbers, random animations, and enemy spawning, as well as several other things. But then we figured out how to generate better pseudo-random numbers by just using really complicated maths. This is the linear congruential random number generator, and it's used a lot today. That being said, the LCRNG isn't truly random. It's still pseudo-random, but just a lot closer to true randomness. Nowadays, banks and security networks, which need extremely random numbers for really secure encryption, use the incredibly precise science of a big wall of lava lamps. No, I'm serious. Cloudflare, the web security company, has a giant wall of 100 lava lamps that they observe with a camera and use the random movement of the bubbles to generate really, really random numbers. But we don't need that kind of thing for calculating our damage numbers, so we make do with the maths that the computers do for us except on occasions where your computer picks up precise mouse movements and keyboard presses from you and uses them to generate your numbers for you. Which is a thing that some systems and video games do. You may be fulfilling the role of a lava lamp without even knowing it. Sorry, I realise I went on a giant tangent just to talk about something that's not even totally relevant to the video, but I just find it really interesting, and it justifies me photoshopping a stupid thumbnail. Now, 
I've been talking about randomness all throughout this video without mentioning one very important caveat with regards to video games. Randomness is often a lie, or at least it's often not totally true. As humans, we have a weirdly distorted perception of chance. To us, 90% is basically a guaranteed success, despite the very real 10% chance of failure. And video games often fudge the numbers for the sake of user experience. If a game tells you you have a 90% chance of success, you probably more have a, like a 98% chance. The Civilization series has a history of this, no pun intended, and apparently in one game the developers coded it so that it was impossible to fail a one-third chance battle three times in a row, even that's actually not how probability works at all. Jake Solomon, the creative director of XCOM, said, We don't want players missing multiple 85% shots, because then the game starts to feel punitive. That 85% isn't actually 85%. Behind the scenes, we wanted to match the player's psychological feeling about that number. Randomization is a key part of many games, and it's really interesting to look at the different types of randomness, the reaction they invoke for a player, and the different ways they're implemented. I've been Carpen Kismath, and thanks for joining me on this episode of Mechanics Dismantled. If you enjoyed, be sure to subscribe down below and leave a comment suggesting what I should cover next. While I was talking about this episode to one of my friends, they suggested D&D, but instead of dice... The DM used tarot cards to decide what happened, and I think that is a stroke of genius, to be honest.